couple of years back, Sefton Hill, co-founder of Rocksteady, had this to say about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And in fact, this is a continuation of the Arkhamverse. Continuation of the Arkhamverse of the Arkhamverse. But this simply isn't true. You see, the devs lie to us. Suicide Squad isn't canon to the Arkhamverse. Is it set in the same universe? Sure, definitely. But much like the Arkham tie-in comics, this game is not canon. It physically can't be canon to the original Arkham games no matter what Rocksteady says. And you know what? That may not necessarily be a bad thing. This is Killer Moth, a prominent Batman villain that's made tons of appearances in DC Comics, shows, and much much more, and he also happens to be our very first example of why Suicide Squad is not canon. You see, Killer Moth never makes a direct appearance in any of the Batman Arkham games, but he is referenced on three separate occasions. Once in Arkham Asylum, where you can find one of his cocoons, another time in Arkham Knight when he's mentioned by a cop, and one final time during Jason Todd's DLC where thugs say stuff like this while referring to Red Hood. Where does this one come from? So based on this dialogue, Killer Moth is confirmed to be dead in the Arkhamverse before ever even making a physical appearance, killed by Jason Todd off screen at some point after he became Red Hood. But wait, fast forward to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. If you go out of bounds and into the restricted area on the map, Waller will eventually blow up the bombs in your head, resulting in a death screen followed by this very dialogue. Now this is on me for expecting better. Colonel Flag, find me Killer Moth. So now Killer Moth is alive again? What? Suicide Squad directly contradicts the Arkham series, and this proves it. Sure, there's ways to explain this change. Maybe it's an Elseworlds character, or maybe someone else took up the mantle after the original Killer Moth died. But regardless of what excuses Rocksteady creates to make the lore make sense, I bring it up to make a larger point. There is a very clear recurring theme within this game of Rocksteady wanting to make major changes to already established stories, lore, and characters, realizing that it doesn't make sense within the Arkhamverse, and then creating lame excuses to try and explain these changes or even better, giving no explanation at all sometimes. I mean, if you believe these lazy excuses, then technically it doesn't break the timeline, but it's also essentially rewriting the stories told within the Arkham games so that Suicide Squad can be forced into a universe that we all love for nothing more than popularity purposes. Hence why it's not canon. But enough talk, let's go over these next four inconsistencies that break the canon too. Number 2, Arkham Batman's massive nerf. Obvious spoiler alert, if you're still here I'm assuming that you don't care, but this is your one and only warning if you do. Okay, so Arkham Batman, the same man who is notorious for defeating his entire rogues gallery all in a single night, the same man who is not only impenetrable physically, but also mentally, the same man who took on entire armies by himself and won, died to a gunshot from none other than Harley freaking Quinn. And you know, it's not like he's also notorious for tanking bullets again, and again, and again in this universe as well, right? After everything he went through, all of his greatest feats and accomplishments, Arkham Batman simply wouldn't have canonically lost to four street-level villains, some of whom he's defeated multiple times before with ease. No, this is not Arkham Batman. This is a rewritten version of the character that doesn't resemble his past self, and is again, only here for popularity purposes. Now look, I get that they're bringing him back later and that this was probably just a clone of Batman, not the real one, but I still hate how this was handled, okay? Clone or not, this version of Batman would have never lost in this scenario. There's just no way. He's taking on just four enemies with guns, using fear gas on them to mess with their minds, fighting in his own Batcave, and he's still lost! Arkham Batman faced and overcame difficult situations time and time again throughout the Arkham series, many that were much harder than this one, yet this is the battle he can't win. This entire boss fight is just not how Arkham Batman operates and plans his attacks anyways. Going in for glide kicks right in front of armed gunmen? Attacking head on rather than sneaking behind for easy takedowns? Not using the disruptor to neutralize any and all threat that the Suicide Squad possess? I mean come on, his strategy and planning is just so off and doesn't even remotely resemble his Arkham counter. Part. And then comes the second stage of the boss fight, aka the bullet sponge part. We don't know exactly how this fight really plays out due to all the fear toxin, but one could assume that Batman is attempting to fight four armed enemies head on in a combat encounter. Like what? This is something that Arkham Batman would obviously never do. He's so much smarter than that, even if he is under the influence of fear toxin. So why would he ever even attempt a combat encounter against the Suicide Squad? The answer is simple. This Batman and this Batman are not the same character 
character at all. One is a genius strategist that practically never loses, and the other is a mind-numbingly stupid version of the character that can't even beat a group of clowns. They are not the same, which means that this game cannot be canon. It gets even worse when you realize that Batman was somehow affected by Harley's new fear toxin or whatever it was that she was using. You know, after this very Batman literally overcame fear in Arkham Knight. I don't know how he'd be immune to that version of fear toxin, but not Harley's kind, but it just seems like a case of bad writing. I know for a fact that me and many other fans wouldn't have minded this at all if it was a different universe, but because this game just had to be connected to the Arkham series, yeah, this is just ridiculous. Again, as I said earlier, these most likely aren't even the real Justice League members and are just Brainiac clones instead, meaning that there's the argument that the Suicide Squad didn't actually kill Arkham Batman. But in that case, wouldn't the clones be even stronger than normal? It's mentioned that Brainiac's Justice League was genetically modified, with just one example of this being Superman's severe lack of weakness to kryptonite. So you're telling me that the Suicide Squad not only beat Arkham Batman, but a genetically modified and buffed up version of Arkham Batman? And this is somehow supposed to be canon? Number 3, the power scaling, which pretty much goes hand in hand with what we just talked about. So as we know, the Suicide Squad is beyond OP in this game. They kill Flash, kill Green Lantern, they make a fool out of Arkham Batman and then kill him too, they somehow murder Superman, and then they go on to defeat Brainiac. If this was set in a different universe where the Justice League was really weak and the Suicide Squad was insanely strong, okay, maybe they would have a chance. Mind you though, this is supposed to be the Arkhamverse, not just any universe. So let's compare these characters to their Arkham counterparts, starting with Deadshot. The Deadshot in the Arkham games is known to be fairly weak, not really posing a threat to Batman at all. He's defeated in one Predator encounter by a young, inexperienced version of Arkham Batman, and then literally takes nothing more than a button press to defeat in Arkham City. This would mean something, but as we know, the Deadshot in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a completely different Deadshot from the Arkham games. Since this one was said to be the original Deadshot, and was also able to kill the imposter from the Arkham series, he's probably a much stronger version of the character, and we can't compare the two as equals right? Or can we? You see, in one of the audio logs, it's implied that the white Deadshot from the Arkham games wasn't just an imposter, no. He was the real Deadshot from a different Earth. Listen to this. Turned out, we had the exact same ammo. It was like he was inside my damn head. There was another Deadshot out there. Would have been my exact damn match, down to the trigger finger, if he wasn't a white dude. After everything we've seen, there's zero doubt in my mind. He was me, but from somewhere else. Another Earth. So based on this, the Deadshot from Arkham Origins and Arkham City was legitimately a carbon copy of the Deadshot from Suicide Squad, with the only difference being skin color. You know what that means? Both of these Deadshots scale to each other in terms of power level. So essentially, if this game is canon to the Arkhamverse, that means that this Deadshot that got absolutely destroyed by Batman on two different occasions also happens to be the same guy who later ends up helping defeat a buffed up version of the same Arkham Batman, along with Brainiac in the entire rest of the Mind Control Justice League. Yikes, that makes zero sense. However bad that is though, Harley Quinn's power scaling manages to be even more ridiculous. In total, Batman goes up against and defeats Harley a total of six times throughout the Arkham series. Once in Arkham Asylum where she's knocked out instantly in a cutscene, again in Arkham Asylum via another cutscene, twice in Arkham City where it takes one button press to beat her the first time and then Batman tosses her around like nothing in a cutscene a little later, Harley Quinn's Revenge DLC where it takes a total of one counter to finish her off, and one final time in Arkham Knight where, what do you know, another singular button press to take her out. So Batman has absolutely obliterated Arkhamverse Harley Quinn on six separate occasions in the past, with only three button presses from the player throughout all of these fights combined. Now, mind you though, Harley Quinn also got locked up in the asylum for five years following Arkham Knight, all the way to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, meaning she probably got rusty and wasn't as strong as her former self, right? Wrong. Apparently, this exact same Harley Quinn from the Arkham games is now capable of beating an entire army of Brainiac minions, help defeat almost all of the Justice League along with a multiversal threat, and to top it off, manages to kill the same Batman that made her look like a fool every time their paths crossed in the previous games. So much like how this Batman and this Batman are nowhere near the same character, both Harley and Deadshot don't match their Arkham counterparts at all, so how can this be canon to the Arkhamverse? What makes this even worse is that there's literally 
basically next to no explanation for this absolutely massive and sudden buff. The only thing that changed was now they have better tech, and it's not like enemies upgrading their arsenal has ever stopped Arkham Batman before. Now as far as King Shark and Captain Boomerang go, both of them never make a physical appearance in any of the Arkham games, so we really don't have anything to compare them to. However, it's very clear through dialogue that Boomerang has been made a fool of by the Flash countless times before, and King Shark is just another big, dumb brute like Bane and Grundy, both of whom Batman has defeated previously. So how is it that this group of clowns could somehow stop a multiversal level threat that has a mind-controlled Justice League in his possession unless these characters aren't canon to the Arkhamverse and don't scale to their previous iterations? The answer is, they can't. If this truly was said in the Arkhamverse and these characters match their former selves' power levels, then they would have been dead pretty much instantly with no difficulty whatsoever. Number 4, King Shark is supposed to be dead. Spoilers for the Assault on Arkham movie ahead, this is your one and only warning. So if you don't know, Assault on Arkham is a spin-off movie made in 2014 about the Suicide Squad set in the Arkhamverse. Well, how is it related? Well, I don't want to get into too much of the story, but what you need to know is that in this movie, King Shark actually gets his head blown off and straight up dies. So if this movie is canon to the Arkhamverse like it was originally said to be, then King Shark is just another character that's been brought back from the dead with yet another lazy explanation in the form of, you guessed it, one line of dialogue. At some point, King Shark says something along the lines of, I have many siblings, or something like that, I don't remember exactly, implying that the King Shark who died in Assault on Arkham wasn't the same King Shark from the Suicide Squad. Regardless, a lot of people claim that the movie isn't canon anyways because of a couple minor continuity issues, which I'll put on screen for you right now, but even if this movie is technically non-canon, which means King Shark never actually died in the Arkhamverse, it still proves my overall point of this entire video. If people are willing to just uncanonize an entire movie that was said to be canon simply based on a couple insignificant continuity errors, then how on earth is Suicide Squad even being considered canon by anybody? Assault on Arkham doesn't match up perfectly with one line of dialogue from Gordon said in Arkham Asylum. It's not canon. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League makes huge changes to Arkham characters and basically rewrites stories told within the Arkham games, and it's canon? This is a game that breaks continuity massively through and through again. I have no idea why so many people are just accepting the fact that this is canon to the Arkhamverse no matter what. I certainly don't. Number 5, the absolute disrespect to Arkham characters. I've talked about Batman's massive nerf already, and Gotham Paladin has an entire video about how Batman got disrespected as well, so I'm not going to talk too much about Batman himself other than this. Arkham Batman was basically just treated like a joke and material for comedy multiple times in this game. There's not much more to add. What I do want to talk about in further detail is the way other Arkham characters were treated, such as the sheer insult to multiple members of the Bat family. Not only were people like Barbara, Nightwing, and Red Hood barely mentioned it at all throughout the entire game, which doesn't make sense as to why they're not involved in any of this, but what they did to Tim? Oh my god. The Arkham games didn't do his character some massive justice, but he was written well and we got to see him grow and shine at certain moments. With Suicide Squad, any respect this character deserved is completely thrown out the window. If you somehow haven't seen it yet, the game implies that Tim was killed off screen by mind controlled Batman, all while the squad stands there and cracks jokes about his death. I mean, this is just a complete insult to the franchise at this point, right? By all means, this doesn't break continuity in any way, but think about it like this. After all of Miles' character buildup, having his own game, and being one of the staples of Marvel's Spider-Man, what if in their next game Insomniac just decided to kill Miles off screen, barely mention his name, and do it in the most disrespectful way possible? Would you consider that canon? Because that's what was done to Arkhamverse Robin for no reason other than a one-liner and unnecessary shock value. And are we just expected to believe that the rest of the Bat family got killed off screen too? Because again, there's no way they wouldn't be in Metropolis trying to help stop Batman, the Justice League, and Brainiac. Now like I've said before, I would be okay with this disrespect to Batman and the Bat family if this game wasn't set in the Arkhamverse, but because all of us already have a connection to these characters, it really hurts to see them just get thrown away and insulted like this. But not only was Bruce and the Bat family insulted, so was Arkham Joker. And no, it's not because of this guy. Remember how Harley Quinn was absolutely head over heels in love with Joker, to the point where even nearly a year after his death, she was was still so desperate that she was willing to be with freaking Henry Adams just because he had the Joker's blood in him? And now, just five years later, we're expected to believe that Arkhamverse Harley went from mourning over the Joker, dedicating her life to avenging him, to now just joking about the whole thing with Ivy and not even mentioning his name, instead just calling him my ex. She did this like five times throughout the story where she was just straight up disrespecting Joker for no reason. Now look, again, I would be completely fine with this if Suicide Squad took place in a separate universe 
because it would make sense, but because this is an Arkhamverse game, it just doesn't feel like Harley's character at all. The Arkhamverse Harley that we know would never say stuff like that. And overall, this version of Harley just felt completely rewritten and like an entirely different character from the original Arkham iteration. So how can it be canon to the Arkham games if these characters are being changed so much? So just to sum it up, Suicide Squad is not canon to the Arkhamverse. There are so many instances of inconsistencies that alter characters, modify continuity, disrespect the franchise, and straight up break the established timeline, all because this game was forced into a universe that it was never meant to be in. Just sitting here right now, there's even more that I can think of off the top of my head adding the multiverse into what used to be a grounded universe, and the tone of this game just not feeling like the Arkhamverse to any degree. It's a shame, because if you get past its Arkham connection, there are still some redeeming factors to this game. The gameplay is fun, the humor is good at times, Batman spying on you and hearing him talk over the comms is awesome, those parts were all done well. I know that before even playing, I went into Suicide Squad with the mindset of this game is not canon to the Arkhamverse, as well as not taking the game very seriously, and I know I had a lot more fun than most. So don't let this game storyline to ruin the legacy of the Arkham series, and stop saying that Suicide Squad is canon to the Arkhamverse because it's not. As far as I'm concerned, Batman's story ended here. Not dying at the wrong end of a bullet, but going out in one of the best ways imaginable as the hero to his own story. Again, as I said, Rock City might be able to save it with the whole Justice League as clones instead, but isn't the damage already done? We'll see what happens. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and I'll see you later.